this overview, we are going to discuss the completely redesigned Data Visualizer app in DHIS2. This overview is broken up into three parts, so make sure to have a look at part two as well. As of 231, the Data Visualizer app has been completely redesigned with a more modern user interface, as well as enhanced functionality and features. We can see this when we review the previous Data Visualizer application used in DHIS 230 and lower. The previous Data Visualizer app is still available as a legacy application. However, the enhancements in the new Data Visualizer app make it the recommended tool of choice. Let us start by discussing the new layout available within this app. As the app has been redesigned, the way in which we select our chart types and dimensions is now a bit different. These selections still appear in the same order, with our chart type selection coming first, followed by the data, period, organization units, and any disaggregations or group sets we may be using to categorize our data. The method in which we perform this selection has been updated, however. We can start with the chart selection. In the previous Data Visualizer application, a single row was available and allowed us to select the chart type that we wanted to create. In the new app, in order to select a chart type, I can click on the chart type button located in the top left corner. This opens up an additional menu with the various chart types to select from. In addition to using larger icons in this interface, we can also see that the name of each chart type is clearly visible, something not present in the previous app. We also see there are two new chart types available in the chart selection, which we will discuss in a bit more detail later on in this overview. By creating additional space using this new method to select chart types, it also leaves room to add in additional chart types as the Data Visualizer app expands its functionality going forward. Let us continue going through the other dimension selections by selecting a column chart as the chart type in our example. The order in which our remaining dimension items, data, periods, organization units, and disaggregations or group sets are listed remains the same. However, now when I go to select a dimension, I have a new pop-up menu which appears to allow me to select the item that I want to work with. We can go through the process of selecting our data in order to see the new menu in action. One of the advantages of the new menu is that it uses larger text while also fitting more items on screen. If I switch my data type to data elements, and then go to select a group, we can see that the data element group menu expands to take up more of the screen and display more groups in comparison to the previous data visualizer application. Let us select some data elements from within the HIV data element group. After I select the group, we can review the text and see where the new selection mechanisms are, as these have been moved around slightly. If we compare this with the previous app, we can see there have been some notable changes. Let us select some data elements from the left side. We can see that data elements are now highlighted in green when we select them. We can move this data element over in a couple of ways. By double-clicking, this has always been available. or by using the arrow in the middle. This arrow has been moved from the top of the dimension selection in the previous app. In order to select all of the data elements within this group, we can use the Select All Text located at the bottom. This has been changed from the double arrows located at the top of the dimension selection previously. After selecting our data elements, we can either hide the selection or directly update our chart. Let us hide the selection and select a period. After I hide the dimension selection, the layout will be updated. The layout is now persistent at the top of the app and is not accessed via a menu option, as was the case in the previous app. If I hover over the data in the layout, it will list the items I have selected. This will be true for the period, organization units, and disaggregations or group sets as well. Next, we can have a look at the period selection. This has also changed. Rather than having both fixed and relative periods in the same area, along with all of the different relative periods being displayed together, the period selections have been categorized in the new Data Visualizer app. Relative and fixed periods are now separated through icons at the top of the pop-up menu. While a period type selector for both fixed and relative periods is now present. Additionally, for the fixed period type, we can select the year we want to work with. 
This is different from the previous app, where we had to use the previous and next year buttons to scroll back and forth between years. Similar to the data selection, the arrows and select all button have been moved to the middle and the bottom of the pop-up menu respectively. Let us select a period in order to proceed. We also have the organization unit selection. The interface has been updated with the main change impacting the selection method. Rather than having to change the selection mode, then working with the organization unit selection method of your choice, all of the options are displayed together to allow you to immediately select the organization units that you want to work with. Let us select an organization unit and proceed to update our chart. In the first part of this overview, we have gone over the new interface in the redesigned Data Visualizer app. While the majority of functionality has remained the same, a more visual, intuitive interface with a better use of space in particular has been introduced. In the second overview, we will discuss working with disaggregations, using the layout, as well as chart options. If you have any questions about any of the concepts discussed in this initial overview, please do not hesitate to let us know.